it. Come on, open your mouth. Yeah, that's it right there. Come on, let's just use your voice as the instrument for a few minutes. Open your mouth and give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth, open your mouth. Come on. This is your time. This is your moment. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. glory, glory. Come on, you open your mouth and give him glory. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, keep it lifted. Come on, keep it lifted. Your sound. Your sound of worship, he appreciates it. He loves it. He's searching for it.
without the music, everybody say Abba. I belong. I belong to you. We lift our hands and our voices and we say Abba, 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 Abba. Abba. I belong. I belong to you. You have my yes, Lord. You have my yes, Lord. You have my yes, Lord. We say, Abba. I belong. I belong to you. Come on, one last time with your hands uplifted. Everybody declare. Say, Abba, Abba. I belong. I belong. gather your communion elements that way we can all partake of the Lord's table together this morning I want to read to you first Corinthians starting from the 11th chapter and the 23rd verse also on the screen it says for I have rec- for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. In the same way, after so, oh, yep, yep, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you should all eat together. Anyone who is hungry should eat something at home, so that when you meet together, it may not result in judgment. And when I come, I will give further directions. Amen. Before we partake, let's take a moment to pray for any sins of omission and sins of commission. Father, we thank you this morning. And we come before you just to say we're sorry, to ask for forgiveness of any sins that we have committed willingly or unwillingly. And God, we thank you that you have forgiven us already. And Lord, we thank you for what you've done on the cross. Your word reminds us and lets us know that we have forgiveness of sins because of the redemption of the blood. And God, we thank you for even a few chapters early in 1 Corinthians, you tell us that we are bought with a price. And so God, we thank you this day. We thank you for forgiveness. And Lord, I pray that we will even have a heart 
to forgive ourselves for anything we have done, for you've already forgiven us. And so, Father, we come to you examining ourselves so that way we can partake of your table together. In Jesus' name, amen. There are two layers to your cup. If you peel the top part, grab the bread, the cracker. And we do this in remembrance of the body of Jesus Christ that was broken for us. May we eat it together in Jesus' name. Eat all of it. One songwriter said he would not come down from the cross just to save himself. <laughs> he decided to die just to save me. If you'll peel the second layer. Isaiah reminds us that because of his stripes, we are healed. And we're drinking this in remembrance of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us. May we drink it together and all of it in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We thank you for an opportunity to partake of your table one more time. And we thank you for what you've done for us on the cross. We thank you for the body that you shed, the blood that you shed, the body that you laid down for us so that we would be free from sin, that we would have a right to eternal life. And God, may we never forget the cost and what it costs for you to lay down your life for us. We thank you for you saw us worthy of dying for and we will, Lord God, desire to be worthy to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship the Lord in song.
He is the living word. Can you give the Lord a praise for being the living word? He is the living word. Amen. Well, could you turn to someone and just say good morning? I don't know if you got a chance to greet anyone, but just say good morning. Welcome to Abundant Life Church. have a child between the ages of three to seven years of age, please allow them to go to Children's Church. Uh, we have a great Children's Church that is here to really serve your children. Could you give our Children's Church, that kind of week, Children's Church. Amen. I, I've been in church a long time and we never had no Children's Church. You fell asleep and bumped your head on the pew and and if that didn't knock you out, you just had to just sleep on your, on your parents' lap or something. But we, So I, I want to let you know that it's very important for our children to grow and understand God's word. Amen? So bring your children, teach them God's word, reinforce God's word. And um, I, I just want to thank our children's church staff and those who are serving every week, who may not even get a chance to be like many of us who come in and are able to worship in here. They kind of have to catch the after effect if that's the case, but yet they're faithful to do the ministry of the Lord. Amen. So I want to thank them. Thank you all for coming and thank you all for being here. A little difference in the crowd from last week to this week. <laughs> but you got to understand sometimes that, you know, you get what they call the CME Christians. They, they come, they come Christmas, Mother's Day and Easter. It's, it's kind of like that's kind of their schedule. That's kind of how it works. But for those of you who are here, and thank you so much for coming. For those of you online, we just want to welcome all of you and um, praise God for each and every one. Amen. My wife is out on assignment today as she's preaching at Impact this morning. And so pray for her and uh, Minister Shade as they're there, as she's there to assist her. And um, we're just going to declare God's word this morning. Are you ready for a word from the Lord? Amen. Amen. Thank you, musicians. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Christian David. Thank you so much for leading us in worship this morning. Wasn't the worship powerful this morning? Amen. Thank you all. Appreciate you all each and every week for serving. Why not just, uh, if you would, I know you stood a little while before, but I'm going to ask if you stand for the reading of the word. And we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 4, and I'm going to read from verse 11 to 16. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. If you don't have a Bible, that's okay. You can look on the screens. We should be able to track together this morning as we share some thoughts with you as the Lord would speak through us. Pray that your hearts will be open to receive it. Amen. So let's pray. Father, thank you. As we read your word, Father, we know as we're reading your word, you are the living word. So Lord, we're not just reading a word. We have you as the word. So Lord, thank you for opening our hearts and ears to hear what your spirit would say to the church. Thank you, Lord, for anointing me, and I pray that you anoint these lips of clay that we might preach the unsearchable riches of Christ and give us inheritance among those that are sanctified. Thank you, Lord, for breathing on us that we might breathe a word, bring life in Jesus' name, bring healing in Jesus' name, bring revelation in Jesus' name. And we give you the glory the honor and praise for what you will do. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said amen, amen and amen. Reading from verse 11 of Ephesians chapter 4 to verse 16, it says these words. And these are the words of the Apostle Paul. He says, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do the work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. 
as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy. Say healthy, everybody, healthy. And growing full of love. I want to preach to you on a subject called bodybuilders. Body builders. You may be seated. I'm, a, I'm amazed that this um, passage of scripture or this book was written by a guy named the Apostle Paul. Um, if you know the history of the Apostle Paul, and if you don't know that history, you can find that the Apostle Paul, he comes up in the book of Acts, somewhere around the 8th chapter to the ninth chapter of Acts, we see the story of the Apostle Paul, but his name was not the Apostle Paul. His name was not even Paul at that time. His name was Saul of Tarshish. And so Saul of Tarshish, who was converted, and his name was changed to the Apostle Paul, is now writing to the church of Ephesus. But when they wrote to the churches of Ephesus in this particular letter, it wasn't just to one church, but these letters were passed around because it was passed around regionally so that many churches could read the letters that Apostle Paul wrote. So when he wrote this letter, it's kind of interesting that he would be one to talk about the importance of the body, the importance of the church, the importance of what it means to be a participant in the church and building up the church. It, it, it's amazing because when you look at Paul's history, he was a destroyer of the church. He was an antagonist of the church. He was the one to bring disruption in the church. He was a conspirator of the church. In fact, he was one that was responsible for the death of Stephen. He was one that when you saw the Apostle Paul, if you had anything to do with church, you ran from him. Because he wasn't just out just to say, okay, I'm going to just disrupt a service. I'm out to murder some people. And Paul, who is a destroyer of the church starting out, God met him on the road called Damascus. I you know, glad to know that God can meet you right where you are, Amen. that you're not too bad for God to meet you where you are, that, that God can meet you on whatever road or whatever street you're going down. And the Lord met him on a road called Damascus, and the Bible says that as he's riding, the, the, not only did the Lord meet him, the Lord knocked him off his beast. Sometimes the Lord got to knock you a little way sometimes to kind of get your attention. And so he knocks him down, and he comes to a place of blindness, and uh, he sent, gets sent some, a prophetic voice that comes to Ananias, and then he ends up in church, and then Barnabas disciples him. And so it's interesting that Paul goes through a radical change at, after that road of Damascus experience. He doesn't go through the change by himself, because there were others who come alongside of him to aid him in this transformation. And I just want to just tell you that as we talk about bodybuilders today, you cannot come into the fullness of what God has called you to do just by yourself. You, 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 it's, it's impossible for anyone to come into the fullness of what God has for them and has designed for them if they're trying to do Jesus on their own. Because when Jesus was crucified, as we celebrated last week, his crucifixion, his death and burial and resurrection, when Jesus ascended and went into heaven, the Bible says that when he went into heaven, uh, uh, he not only sat on the right hand of God the Father, but also he invested something in the church, which is now his body. So while his physical body is gone, it kind of has transitioned and transformed itself into another physical body called the church. So in other words, we are the body of Christ. I didn't hear no amens. We are the body of Christ. And just like your hand does not constitute a full body, each one of us cannot constitute a full body. We need other members. We need other people to be part and parcel of what we know as the body of Christ. So tell your neighbor, you can't do Jesus on your own. You can't do Jesus on your own. You can't do Jesus on your own. I know you're bad in prayer, but you can't do Jesus on your own. I know you can worship, but you can't do Jesus on your own. You've got to have other people in your life. 
you got to have people in your life. And when you read this, this, this text, it comes in a very important, uh, uh, what I call, order. If you've ever read the book of Ephesians, it's not that long. I just want to encourage you to read. It's only six chapters where Paul begins to lay down what he calls doctrine. Can you say that word doctrine? Doctrine. Doctrine is teaching. Doctrine is what we call the foundation to the building. So in other words, the building that we're sitting in right now sits on something called a foundation. Amen? The windows may look nice. The carpet may look nice. You know, and we might have a great kind of what I call environment. But guess what? If an earthquake hits, it's going to test the foundation. Has anybody heard about earthquakes lately? Oh, maybe you haven't been living in this world, but if you've heard about earthquakes lately, the earthquakes is not somewhere over there anymore. The earthquake is right at your house. And what the earthquake does, it tests the integrity of the foundation. So when you look at pictures of where earthquakes have happened, depending on the seismic or, or, what has, or, or the size of the earthquake, whether it's a, a scale of a seven or a four or a five, that when it comes to these different earthquakes that are happening, it's testing the foundation of structures. So if you've seen uh, earthquakes happen, some buildings are leaning. Some buildings actually were decimated. Sometimes the shaking is so bad, the, the, the actual building, though it stands, it has to be torn down because it's no use. It's condemned. So let me ask you, how's your doctrine? How's your foundation? So when you have a shaking in your life, when they give you a report like, you know what, I, I, I know you don't want to hear this, but I have diagnosed something that we can't do anything about. How's your foundation? When they lay you off your job and you say, oh, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. I, I never expected. I have a mortgage payment. I have, I have bills to pay. I have responsibilities. I have children to feed. Well, how's your foundation? Because when the shaking comes, tell your neighbor the shaking is going to come. Because the Bible says whatever can be shaken will be shaken. Anybody ever go through a shaking lately? And some of you right now, you're going through a shaking right now, and you're saying, Lord, I wish the shaking would stop. He says, don't, don't worry about no shaking. Test your foundation. Because the Bible says that if you hear the words of the Lord and do them, you're likened unto a man who built his, his house on a foundation that when the wind came and the storms came, the house didn't fall down. Tell your neighbor, start falling apart. Start falling apart. You don't need to fall apart because of political issues. You don't need to fall apart because somebody gave you some bad news. You don't got to fall apart because somebody is against you because you're built on a foundation. Build your life on a foundation. Life goes up. Life goes down. People come. People go. Things happen. But guess what? When you are depending on Jesus and you built your life on the foundation, you can say, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweet name, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sick and stand. Could I get a witness in the building? We need to go back to foundation. You can't depend on trends. Trends will come and trends will go. Some of the things that people are doing now when it comes to fixing their hair or dressing, I said, guess what? They just recycled that. We had that before. We did that, but that's just a different style that we had before. We need to go back to foundation. And so Paul when he writes to the church of Ephesus, he begins to lay out doctrine. He begins to lay out a foundation. And the foundation that he begins with, he talks about the wealth of the believer. That when Jesus died for us, he didn't leave us without some resources. Oh, I wish I had an amen in here. He, he didn't leave us without resources. In fact, 
We have possession, a spiritual possession that we have in Christ that comes from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that Paul begins to pray that we will be enlightened to the wealth of what we have in Christ. So therefore, if you have any doubt in your mind whether the Lord loves you, you need to read Ephesians because not only did he love you, he, uh, he made you an heir. Do you understand what an heir is? Not an heir that you hear with, an heir. I'm talking about an heir, a person that has an inheritance. A person, a person that recognizes that they have wealth because of what he did. That therefore we function out of a wealthy place, not a place of poverty. So the spiritual wealth of the believer that I am adopted by him. So it don't matter what my last name is. I've been adopted. I have an inheritance because of his blood and what he has done. In fact, he has done such a work in me. Guess what? And for us as well, that I don't have to worry about being blessed because I have spiritual blessings in Christ. So I don't always have to come to church and stand on an altar and say, Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. He's going to say, you never read the book. Praise the Lord. When my father died, I didn't have to go and stand around and say, Lord, I wonder where he left me. He had a will. <laughs> and my name is in it. Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. If your name is in it, what you worried about? You already got the riches. Your name is in the book already. Hallelujah. And so Paul begins to lay down doctrine, and then he talks about duty. Wow. So in other words, we just can't have doctrine or good teaching. We got to have a way of living it out. So he says, not only do you have doctrine, but now you have a responsibility. Because you have wealth in Christ, this is how you live as a wealthy person. There are certain ways that wealthy people live, you know, that ordinary people don't know how they live. Does anybody know any wealthy people? Yeah, if you know how wealthy, if you know anybody who's wealthy, I mean wealthy, there are certain things that they do that I don't have the luxury to do. It's called not work. There, there, there's, there's, there's some things that God has called us to do as a result of what he left for us. So Paul gets into this whole understanding of what it means to be doing the duties or what it means to be responding because of what he's done for us. So the first thing that Paul begins to talk about in chapter 4 of Ephesians, I'm doing Bible study right now. Is that okay if I do a little Bible study? All right. He, he starts to lay out and he says, okay, you have the riches, you've been adopted, you have forgiveness of sins, you're an heir of salvation, now what are we going to do with that? The first thing he says, now make sure that you know how to walk in unity. Make sure that you walk worthy of your vocation, of your calling. Make sure that you understand that this is not just about listening and holding on to the wealth you have. You have to learn how to walk in unity. So there's a call to walk in unity. Say amen to that. There's a call to walk in purity. You see, amen's got lower. <laughs> the amen's got real low. And he, said, and he, you know, and he says in, in chapter 4, verse 17, he says, to walk in purity, you can't walk like Gentiles walk. In other words, your walk is different from the world's walk. Uh oh. You, you, there should be a distinction to your living than the person who doesn't know Jesus. No one should have to guess. You know, I, I wonder. I know, they tell, I, know they, I know they say things about the Bible, but I, I, I wonder. And part of that is that, we, that he says, now you have to learn how to walk in love. Amen's got real low again. You got to learn how to walk in love. Not just love when it feels good. Not just love when you want some romance. You have to learn how to walk in love. 
That means to live a life of love. Then he says you got to live in understanding what light means and be a children of the light. Meaning that you can't be in the dark places and just be comfortable. And I get, I get so, so concerned that Christians are comfortable in the dark places and not shining their light. He says, you're children of light. And he says, be wise. In other words, when you are a believer, you are to walk in wisdom. That means you don't make dumb, stupid mistakes. Uh-oh. That means you don't make mistakes because you're heeding God's word of wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom will keep you from making dumb moves. We all make dumb moves. I'll put up my hand. Anybody make a dumb move? Well, of course we have, because we, 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 we know better, right? We know better than God sometimes. God, God, I, God, I, God, I got this. I got this. You don't need, you don't need, I don't even need to pray about this. This is God. It ain't God, it's you. This is your decision. And then when it comes out bad, you're going to say, God, why you let this happen? He said, I didn't let it happen. You never asked me in the first place. You thought you knew it all. But he says, walk as a wise person. So the question when you make a decision in life is not only what the right decision to do, what is the wise decision? Because the wise thing to do may not be part of your thinking at the moment because your thinking would be, well, what is right for me? And God is not going to necessarily speak to you on what is just right for you. He's going to say, this is my wisdom for you. Wow. It's wisdom not to say anything when you're upset. It's wisdom. It's not being cowardice. It's not, you know, you know any, anybody got a problem not, you know, just kind of keeping quiet when when you're just kind of really upset and people get on your last nerve and, and people are pushing your buttons and I see a few hands go up, but I, I, see, I see some conviction happening and running through the aisles right now. You know, you, you know, you, you know we all got this, this, these traits. You know, somebody cuts in front of you and you're driving and somebody cuts in front of you and you never invited them to cut in front of you. But the wise thing to do is just kind of back off a little bit and let them get in front of you rather than pulling up beside them. I know it wasn't right they cut in front of you, but the wise thing for you to do is just back right up. Could I get an amen in the house? Amen. See, he says, don't live your life wisely. Live your life wisely. And then he talks about this whole understanding about living life, and he says, you're called to harmony. Somebody say harmony. You're called to harmony. Harmony means that you're actually called to a place where you're not there to disrupt everything. You're not there to make confusion happen. <laughs> oh, my. And he tells us what areas we need harmony. He says you need harmony. He says husbands and wives, you need to work in harmony. Hold on. It got really low there. Parents and children. We need to work in harmony. People who work, employers and employees, need to work in harmony. He calls us to harmony. And then lastly, he calls us in, the, in this book of Ephesians, he says, I'm calling you to walk in victory. I'm calling you to walk in victory. There, there, there's no reason why you have victory on Easter, you ain't got no victory the, day, the week after. What happened to your victory? It only happens once a year? When Jesus got up from the dead, he says, you can walk in victory every day of your life. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. And he says, you need to stand strong in the power of God. That's why he says in Ephesians chapter 6, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles and the schemes of the devil. But the first thing he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of 
his might. And when you put on that armor, and every day you put on that armor, you're able to stand in the evil day. So you have victory every day because you put on his armor every day. I don't know this thing about some days they lose their, oh, no, no this or that, lost my victory. What, what happened to you? Well, Bishop, some days I'm up, some days I'm down, some days I'm level to the ground. What, what's that? Are you a yo-yo? What's wrong with you? I understand there are days that we don't feel well. I understand there are days that we're tired. I understand there are days that our bodies are sick. But you know what? Even in the midst of that, you still got victory. You don't have to lose your victory because you don't feel good. You have the victory. And so Paul is saying, look, we have to understand what it means to be bodybuilders. So let me just say three things for you. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13, Paul says that Christ has given gifts to the church. And when Jesus died and went and was resurrected to heaven, he didn't leave us without gifts, without grace. That's what gifts stand for. It's what charisma or grace. He gives us grace. It all comes from him. And he says that he equipped the church or gave the church these gifts. He first of all mentions apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Why? To equip the church for the work of ministry. So that means that the role of a pastor, the role of an apostle, the role of an evangelist, the role of a teacher is not to do the work of ministry. It is to equip the church or the saints for the work of ministry. So what happens in church, we have it mixed up. See, the reason why church ain't church is because we don't do it like the Bible say do it. We got the ministers doing the equipping and the service. Oh, you don't hear what I'm talking about. We, we, we have, you know what, they're, they're called to ministry, so let them do it. No, we are called to give you the tools, the information, the instruction this, to get you in a place where you can do work of ministry because you've got work to do. Tell your neighbor, you got work to do. You got work to do. You got work to do. You got some work to do. The reason why God gave me to you is not for me to do your work. Uh-oh. He gave you a hand because your hand needs to grab things. Now try to grab it with your eyeball and see how far you get. You can see with your eye, but you have to grab with your hand. So what happens to the church? The church is all dismembered and dysfunctional because we don't understand our roles. Amen. Let me announce to your role. He has given the apostle, the evangelist, the pastor and teacher, prophetic ministry for the equipping of the church, of the saints. We're here to equip you, not do your work. Turn your neighbor and says, neighbor, the pastor has quit doing your work. I have resigned from doing the saints' work. My role is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. Well, what, we, what do you need equipping in? Well, first of all, you need to be equipped in the word of God, meaning that you need to know how to handle the word of God. You need to learn how to handle God's word accurately. You need to handle God's word and understand what it does for your soul. You need to know how to feed yourself. Do you know that raising children is very interesting? Because my wife and I, we raised two children, two boys. And it would be interesting if we raised them without an understanding how to feed themselves. Could you imagine raising a child, not that they can't feed themselves, you never taught them how to feed themselves. Every one of my children, both of them, I said, before you leave this house, you need to know how to cook, you need to know how to clean, you need to know how to wash your clothes, you know how to iron your clothes. And sure enough, you need to know how to deal with your money. (laughs) 
You need to know how to pray. Because daddy ain't going to always be there to pray for you or with you. You need to know God's word so that you can understand some things. Now, whether you do it or not, at least you know how to do it. Could you imagine someone who is ill-equipped to handle the basic needs of life, struggling through life because no one ever taught it? Who's teaching you and who has taught you how to pray? Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. And if there's nothing that you haven't learned or shouldn't learn from this ministry, you usually know how to pray. Why do that? We pray every day. Tell your neighbor, we pray every day. We pray every day. Every day. In fact, we do prayer trainings online. Did you know that? We do prayer trainings online. So if you don't know how to pray, you can learn how to pray in this church. There's no reason why the enemy should be beating you up because you don't know how to pray. Well, I'm going to call the bishop to pray. That's wonderful. I hope I answer the phone. You didn't know how to pray. So it tells us that we're here to equip you for work of ministry, which means that all of you who are not apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers, right, you, 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 you are a person that really understands that, guess what? If we're really going to have church as Jesus designed it, I have to be equipped and trained to do the work of service that I'm called to do. So the first thing we asked you to do that many of you did not do yet is to take the spiritual gifts assessment. Have you ever heard that before? All right. Now ask your neighbor, why didn't you do that? Wait for an answer now. Why didn't you just say, don't ask them if they did it. Ask them why didn't they do it? Why didn't you do it? Why didn't you do it? Why didn't you do it? Now, some people didn't do it because you didn't know if you should do it. Some people haven't done it because you may have not known how to do it. But now you know the spiritual gifts assessment is right on the website. You can go to the website right after the sermon and take your spiritual gifts assessment so you know what God has invested in you. So now we know how to equip you. Say amen. amen. So a bodybuilder, if you think about bodybuilders, how many, does anybody watch bodybuilders at all? Anybody look weightlifting competitions or bodybuilders? Now some of y'all watch it. You don't watch it for the bodybuilding competition. You watch it for something else. <laughs> Let me get back in the anointing now, little to Jesus. Bodybuilders, bodybuilders are ones that really have to have focus. Focus. My son took a bodybuilder. Some of you know my son, Mark. He took up bodybuilding. He has, he has very little percentage of body fat on him. So if you've ever seen anything on, it, on Facebook or whatever, he's a, he's a gym rat, for real. For real. I'm talking about for real. Um, and he tells me how he eats. <laughs> and I said, you know, I could never do that. I could never do that. Because... I'd be sick of the same thing all the time. You know, he don't eat donuts. I like donuts. He don't eat french fries. I like french fries. He don't eat potato chips. I love potato chips. You know, he, he, he doesn't eat that kind of, he has a very disciplined, planned diet that he puts his food in packages so he knows what he's going to eat. He don't have to think about what he's going to eat. He has it all put together so that he just goes and eats. Now me, I'm looking around to eat. I'm grabbing anything I can grab. So obviously, by the looks of me, I am not a bodybuilder. <laughs> not at all. I always tell him, I said, my six pack is underneath all this. It's, it's, just, it's just hidden underneath. 
It's all hidden. But, but anyway, you probably wouldn't believe by looking at him that when he was a young man growing up, he was obese. He was obese. And as, he was, as we were going through and talking with his doctor, his pediatrician, and said, if he doesn't change the way he is actually eating, he's not going, he's not going to be a healthy young man after a while. And so my wife and I, we said, OK, we, we have to fix this. So rather than put him on a diet to single him out, we said, I think we all need to go and eat a little better here. So we started eating better, and we started to eat more broccoli, yuck. And we started to eat more oatmeal, double yuck. And we started eating all this other stuff that we, you know, I said, Lord, every time I pray, I said, Lord, make it taste good. Lord, make it taste good. Lord, make it taste good. And, you know, he, he, he started to take more inventory about how he looked and also how he felt. But now, as he's gone into adulthood, because he's in his 30s, he'll be, he'll, be 30, he'll be 33 on the 8th. That's tomorrow, right? He'll be 33 tomorrow. Um, he, he understands the value now of all the things he was doing years ago. Because as you get older, talk to me, old people. As you get older, you realize what you did back then are paying dividends where you are right now. Oh, I don't want to hear nothing up in here. What you did years ago pays you dividends where you are right now. That's a hint to all you young people. Eventually, you're going to get old. And depending on how you take care of yourself, well, depending on if you need an apparatus or not. But the discipline that he's under to take care of his body, he still continues that. So in the same way, if you know bodybuilders, they don't eat like normal people. They exercise every day. <laughs> every day. He's lifting weights. He said, Dad, I got to go to the gym. I said, now do, 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 do some reps for me, son, while you go. But how many you know him doing reps for me ain't going to help me at all? I wish it would. But his reps ain't going to help me at all. He's got to lift, he's got to lift weights and, lift and do his, his routine. And the question is, how does he continually do that? It's because he's focused. And the question I have for you, has... Has your focus been broken as it relates to what God has called you to do to the point where you don't even work out in the Bible no more? You, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't even start pressing in to praise anymore. You don't press in to praise. You know, they, they bench press, but you don't even bench press to praise anymore. In other words, unless, unless this, this, this brother Christian David pumps you into praise, you don't praise at all. But guess what? You don't have Brother Christian David at home. Brother Christian David, you ain't coming to my house to press me into praise. I better get into praise and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I give you the praise. Lord, I give you the glory. Lord, I honor you. I praise and magnify your name. You got to lift your own weights as it relates to praise. Everybody needs to have focus. Can you say focus? Focus, focus, focus. Some, some of us have, have broken our focus where we don't even pray until we get into trouble. We don't even pray until you get into trouble. In fact, the first time you cracked the Bible this week is when I said open to Ephesians chapter 4. How do you expect to live off of a word one week at a time? And that's if you come to church every week. And part of the, the focus of a, of a bodybuilder is their diet. You can't outwork a bad diet. 
I said, Mark, Mark, uh, what should I be eating? And everything he said, I didn't want. <laughs> it, 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 there was nothing on his list that I had an appetite for. Not one thing. <laughs> not one thing. Not one thing. Dad, you need to eat more vegetables. Don't want that. Dad, you got to eat more salad. Don't, don't want that. Dad, you got to drink water. Oh, I definitely don't want to keep drinking that water. Can I have a little something? No, just water. Can we spice it up? No, just water. Just something sweet. No, nope, no sweet. No, put the cake away. No cake, no brownie, no. You know, they took away my brownie, but Kevin. Kenneth, Kenneth, they took away my brownie. He took, he tried to take my brownie. Try, try to take my brownie. He said, trade the brownie and get some beets. <laughs> beets? But I realized I could never look like that because I'm not willing to eat like that. I'll be honest. I tried to be focused. I tried. And then my wife told, told I want you to go to the store. Went to Market Basket, and all of a sudden, I got distracted. <laughs> and rather than staying on the outside aisles, I went down the chip aisle. And fell into sin. <laughs> Let me finish. You got to be focused. You got to be focused. The second thing, you got to be faithful. He talks about that if we're going to be good bodybuilders, we need to understand the importance of being faithful. Now, here's why he says faithfulness comes into play. He says that the first thing is you're not going to become a child or immature like children and be tossed to and fro by every new teaching that comes out. And he says you're not going to be influenced by people that try to trick you and people who are clever to make truth sound good, but it's not truth at all. Verse 15 says, instead, you will speak the truth in love, growing in every area. Notice what it says, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. So every bodybuilder needs to understand that if they're going to be healthy and strong, they've got to be consistent. Everybody say consistent. You've got to be faithful. You know, you can't go in and have real good muscles if you only go in once a month. Anybody go to the gym once a month and expect to be healthy? Anybody got a gym membership but you don't go? It just makes you feel good to having a card in your, in your back pocket, right? <laughs> I just, it feels good to have a gym membership, but don't go. But just like that, you know, folks have churches that they don't go. They don't go. They, they don't go. And so when they're weak and they're, and they're anemic and, they're, and they have trouble, they say, how come, how come, how come I'm not able to, to deal with life. I said, well, how, how often have you gone to the house to be equipped and be strengthened and be prayed for and pray for other people? Well, you know, you can't build muscle like that. I remember when I, had, when I was working at UPS, United Parcel Service, you know, the brown trucks that drive around. And I took a part-time job 3 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock in the morning. And my job was to unload the 18 wheelers. So I'm in there with three other guys, generally three other guys. We got to know each other. And we're unloading the trucks so that the trucks can go, so that the packages can go to another area so they can scan them and put them in those different trucks that drive around and deliver them. So the first time I got up there, I didn't know how this thing was working. So they said, OK, we want to pull up the, the, the ramp, and we want to start rolling the boxes down. So they had all kinds of boxes. Now, for me, I try to be smart. I would grab the small boxes. I try to grab the small. You know, I feel it. I can feel it. And then I, oh, I can do this. Feel it, I can do this. And then they kind of caught on and said, oh, we see. 
come over here. And they put me on those 60-pound boxes, 70-pound boxes. And I came home. I felt okay. But the next morning, I felt like I got hit by a bus. My body was so sore. My back was sore. My ankles were sore. My knees were sore. My hands were sore. And I said, honey, I'm so sore. I'm so sore. She said, I, I know. She, she rubbed some Bengay on me. She says, OK, your 3 o'clock shift is happening, and you need, a, you need to get going. You don't want to be late for work. I'm sore, I'm sore as I could be. I'm just like, she said, OK, honey, you, honey, you'll be all right. Honey, you'll be all right. Because she understood that you know, my muscles were not really acclimated for that kind of work. And so my body was really sore, and I was sore. I was crying sore. And she said, don't worry, honey. It'll get better as you go along. If you be consistent with it and work through the struggle and work through the pain, and she was right. It took me like five weeks. But I had to work through the struggle and work through the pain and work through the days and get my Bengay. Anybody know Bengay? I had the Bengay. I was covered from toe, hot head to toe with Bengay. I never got a mosquito bite that whole time because Ben Gay was covering me. But working through the pain, it taught me that while I was working through the pain, my muscles started getting stronger. I could handle the job because my muscles started to be trained. And some of us don't stick with anything long enough. You feel a little bit of pain. A little bit of discomfort. It's like, oh no, Lord, that ain't that can't be for me. Lord, 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 that can't be for me. Oh no, Lord, that's that's too painful. I, that, no, I, that's getting up too early in the morning for that, Lord. Oh no, Lord, that's that's just too much to lift and too much to deal with. But if you stay with it, your muscles are going to get stronger. You're going to get stronger, and that's why folks are not strong today in the church because they don't stick with nothing. They don't, they don't stick with anything. The job that you pray for and God gave it to you, when you have a hard time, you say, Lord, I'm ready for another one. Wait a minute. Didn't you just pray for this? Why do you want to get out so quick? Well, they asked too much of me. <laughs> no, Lord, this, this job got problems. I didn't know this job had problems. I didn't come here for problems. The reason why God sent you there was because it had a problem that you could fix. Amen. Amen. This is the time to be faithful. And the reason I'm saying this is because I heard something that really made me sad. And that was, they were trying to tell people how to quit their jobs by sending a Facebook message. Oh, yeah, yeah, you don't have to face your boss anymore. Just send them a Facebook or send them a, send them a Facebook message or send them some type of Instagram message and tell them that you're not coming back anymore. I said, we live in a day quitting has been a norm. People quit on themselves. They quit their marriages. They quit their children. They quit church, they quit jobs, they quit life. That's not the walk of a believer. We don't quit because it's hard. And the Lord wants to deliver you from the spirit of quitting, a quitting spirit. Last and final. Bodybuilders understand that fruitfulness is a goal. So in verse 15, it says that when we speak the truth in love, we grow more and more like Christ, who's the head of the church. In verse 16, it says he makes the whole body fit together perfectly. And I want you to key into this particular sentence. It says, as each part does its own special work, it helps other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing full of love. Now notice what happens here. 
He says, as I do my part, I'm helping other people to grow. You get that? As I do my part, I help other people to grow. So the church needs to kind of change its paradigm a little bit that church isn't just about me. Church is not just about me. By doing my part, I'm helping other people to grow. So why isn't the church growing? Because we really don't understand the value of our part. And we're not doing our part. So other people can't grow. And if there's no growth, it talks about health. Church is also about health. Healthy things do what? Very easy to grow. Healthy things grow. So if it's not growing, we need to take an inventory, not a, well, the world hates us. That's not the reason why it doesn't grow. Maybe it's because I got to examine my own part and I have to examine my own health. Are you healthy? And are you doing your part? So here's the question I want to end with. The question is this. What areas of growth and development do I need to focus on to fulfill my role in building up the church, promoting unity and spiritual growth as emphasized in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 16? That's the question. What areas of growth and development do you need to focus on? Bodybuilders focus on areas where they need to grow. So if they just stand there as a bodybuilder and say, okay, I'm just going to work my arms. That's all they do is their arms. That's not really bodybuilding. They've got to work on other areas. So for many of us, you're very good at reading the word, but you're terrible at prayer. Oh, you're good at prayer, and you're good at the word, but you're terrible at giving. Giving? Oh, my Lord, no. Bishop, giving? You give more to Amazon than you give to God. You always got a package at your house. And when you look at your record on donation record, you ain't even got enough to wrap a package. Do you realize statistically the giving of the church, Big C Church, is less than 3%? But the clubs are making money. Oh, my. The place that they call spirits, you know the place they call spirits. Don't act like you don't know the place they call spirits. They were making money during COVID. Never lacked. But when we come to give into missions and give into sowing into seed and sowing into God's house, all of a sudden everybody kind of gets a little tight. When the Bible does say that Paul talks about this, he says, you know, just as you have increased in love and in faith, increase yourself in the grace of giving. How generous are you? Or does God got to almost cut a hole in your pocket? Which he will do. God will cut a hole in your pocket. Read, it, read Haggai. Those people were building their houses. Woo, they were building their houses. They were building their houses. And the Lord said, consider your ways. He said, because I'm ready to cut some holes in your pocket now. And some of us can't figure out, how in the world can I make all this money and I can't get ahead? Let me give you the solution. If you're not getting ahead, check out your generosity. Just check, it, just check your record. Move the decimal. Oh, it's, it's tight. I ain't getting no amends in here. I ain't getting no amends in this church. When you talk about giving, I should get, whoo, hallelujah. No, no, I ain't getting, no, when you talk about giving, 
Because, you know why? Because the Bible says, as Jesus says, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. You judge the heart of a person by what they give to. So if you love your church, why is it zero? If I said I love my wife and I gave her nothing, I'd be dead. <laughs> well, honey, I'm just giving you my presence. What? Your presence better come with putting on the light. Your presence better come with putting on some heat in here and bringing a check home. I'm just talking about life. Is that, is that real life? Is that real life? So why is it that we are building up one muscle and not paying attention to other muscles? Some of us need to grow in the, the muscle of evangelism. You haven't won a soul. You've been saved 40 years. They haven't won a soul to Jesus yet. You're still struggling about your own salvation. Well, I know someday I feel saved. Someday I don't feel saved. Lord, am I saved? Do you love me? <laughs> Listen, leave that behind and go and tell somebody about Jesus. Please. 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 You shout about victory and how, hallelujah and haven't won one person to Jesus in your whole life about being saved. That's terrible. Because we're supposed to be making disciples. Now, I'm calling you to this because it's a corporate call, not just an individual call. I need strengthening in areas of my own life if I'm going to be a good bodybuilder. I need to witness to people more, not just at church. I need to help people more, not just helping them when I know them. I need to speak a word to other people who need a word from God who may not know that I am Bishop Larry Ward. And so do you. So as we stand, I want to pray. Is this all right? Because I want to strengthen. I want you to be strong in the Lord. I want when you come into this church, it's not just about you. Or wherever you go, it's not just about you. God wants to use you to build up his body. The kids are coming in. Come on in, children. Come on in. I want to pray for those that need these, need these prayer in three areas. Okay? I, I want to pray, first of all, for those of you who are really struggling with focus. You struggle with focus. You struggle, you struggle with that. You struggle being focused. You struggle being focused. Sometimes it's distractions around you, and sometimes it's people that are around you. And I want you to come to this altar. God bless you. He's coming. I ain't asking him to come yet. You struggle with focus. You struggle. I want to pray for you. Because you cannot become the kind of person that God wants you to be and do what he wants you to do if you're always struggling to be focused. Secondly, I want to, I want to pray for people who have struggled with consistency. If you're already here, just stay here. If you're struggling with consistency, I want you to get up here. If you struggle with consistency, I want you to get up here. And it doesn't just have to be consistency as it relates to a spiritual thing. You're not even consistent with the promises that you make to yourself. You have habits that are bad. Habits that destroy you. Things in your life that seem to get in the way that you won't change because you're happy being where you are, comfortable, but you're not happy. And the Lord is saying, you can straighten this out. 
I can give you the consistency that you need. And thirdly, I want to pray for those who feel like you are in a place of where you're not fruitful. You're not fruitful. You haven't won any souls. You haven't. You, you don't see any fruit coming out of what you're doing. And it's okay to say, hey, it's not working. It's not working. Have you ever been in a place where it's not working? Sure you have. I have. And God needs to do some things in your life. Some pruning, some trimming, some fertilizing, so that you'll be fruitful. This is a call. This is a call that God is making us to be body builders. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The shaking has come. You see the earth growing. You see the winds blowing. Don't think that all this wind and, and weather is not without purpose. I'm reading it very carefully because you know what? It's speaking of the times. The turbulency of the times. The trouble of the times. The shaking of the times. Snowing where it should be sunny. And sunny where it should be snowing. It's crazy. One weekend is cold, one weekend is hot. Your foundation has to get in place. Father, whatever you're up here for, just raise your hand. Father, Father, right now in Jesus' name, thank you, Father, that you are reestablishing order. You're reestablishing order in your saints. Thank you, Lord, because even in this moment, God, I pray, Lord, that even as they stand here, God, you are bringing them to a new level of focus, a new level of focus, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they will not be drawn away by some of the things they've been engaged in or some of the things that will attract their attention. I pray that they'll learn how to turn off some things that are attracting them. And right now, the Lord is beginning to just, just ground you and establish you, you know? All right? It's a shaking right now. It's a shaking. It's a shaking. It's a shaking. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would just put in us an inner consistency. Consistency. We come against every form of waywardness, indecisiveness, because Lord, you said a person who is wavering and indecisive and unstable in all their ways. So Father, right now we call your people to stability, financial stability, mental stability, emotional stability, physical stability. Thank you, Father, that even now, you are the one that gives us the ability to be faithful because we're called by you, we're called by you, we're called by you, we're called by you. He's calling you level of faithfulness and father as you call us into faithfulness Lord thank you for fruitfulness thank you father that we oh God are called to abide in you and your word abides in us that we might bring forth much fruit you want our fruit to remain that our joy might be full so father in the name of Jesus I pray for fruitfulness to come forth I pray, Lord, for many souls, Father, to come forth, healings to come forth. I pray for deliverances to come forth in the name of Jesus, that this is a time, Father, for fruitfulness. There's been a lot of, oh, God, needs to be some digging there, God. You're digging up some things. You're digging up some things, Lord. Father, you're fertilizing. God, because, God, this is the season for fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. And, Lord, I bless you right now because, God, this church will not be the same. We will not want to have church the same. Thank you for equipping us and fortifying us as believers so that we can do work of ministry. 
So Lord, we draw from you today. Would you just lift your hands today, right now? Just lift your hands and just draw from him. Just draw from him. Just draw your strength from him. Just draw your strength from him. Open your mouth and just draw strength from him. Open your mouth and just draw strength from him. The strength that you need will come from him. The strength that you need is be declared as you declare through your mouth. The strength that you need. The strength that you need. The strength that you need. The strength. The strength that you need. Strength that you need. Strength. Strength. Inner strength. Strength in the inner man. Strength in the inner man. In the inner workings. Father, break now in Jesus' name. Strength. 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 Strength of my brother. Strength. Hatabosha. Strength. New strength. Inner strength. Inner strength. Inner strength. Inner strength. Inner strength, my brother. Inner strength. The inner strength. The inner strength. Inner strength. Pray for the inner strength. Inner strength. Strength on the inner man. Strength on the inner man. In 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 the inner person. Right now, James, the inner man. The inner man is being strengthened. The inner man is being strengthened. Thank you for strengthening of the inner man. The inner being. Father, we prophesy. This man will be, oh God, strong in the Lord. Strong in the Lord. Strong in the Lord. Strong in his mighty power. 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 Open your mouth. Open your mouth, bro. Open your mouth and worship. Open your mouth and worship. Open your mouth. Strong, strong, strong. Strengthen him, strengthen him, strengthen him, strengthen him. Strengthen Father, strengthen him, Father, strengthen him. Fortification in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, right now. Right now. Strengthen your body. Strengthening your body. Strengthen your mind. Thank you for the purpose. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we worship you. Thank you. Father, we Father, we love you. Father, we love you. Let's sing the song, Abba, we belong to you.
God bless you as you're seated. Abba. I belong to you. I belong to you. blessed by that word today. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to be found faithful, fruitful, and moving into what God's called us to do. A couple of announcements we have for this morning. As Bishop said, just a reminder, we do have prayer every day, uh, Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Zoom. No cameras, all audio, and also on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please visit our website, aocambridge.org. Go to the prayer um, tab, and then you'll be able to find our prayer link and also the theme for each day and the theme for the week. So we invite you to come pray with us. And of course, on Sundays, 9.30 a.m. right here in the sanctuary. Bishop gave a great word today, and for you, you may be inquiring more about prayer, salvation, or maybe even becoming a member here at Abundant Life Church. I'm going to give you a moment just to pull out your smartphones. You can scan this QR code, or you can even text this number, 508-500-6554. Again, that number is 508-500-6554. Again, I'll give you a moment to pull out your smartphone device and scan this QR code. We'd love for you to connect with us. As Bishop said, you do not have to do this walk and you should not do this walk alone, amen? You can do it in a community here at Abundant Life Church, the place where faith and life connect. And again, on behalf of our pastor, Bishop Lawrence Ward and his wife, Reverend Dr. Virginia Ward in her absence, wanna welcome and thank God for all of our guests this morning. Can we just give a hand if you are for all of our guests? could have been anywhere in the world, and we're so glad that you decided to worship with us today, whether online or here in our sanctuary. So glad that you decided to come to Abundant Life Church. So there's a community gathering and fundraiser on Friday, April 26th, just a few weeks from now. It will be a great opportunity to, one, connect with other Christians who are passionate about engaging issues related to race. Two, learn about how the RCCI, which is the Race and Christian Community Initiative, has been building shalom across racial lines, and how we might work together to continue God's redemptive work in yourself, your congregation, and community. And three, you can support the RCCI so that they can grow into a new season of ministry and continue to help Christians engage race with Jesus at the center. So this again will be held on Friday, April 26th from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at the Second Church of Dorchester, which is located at 44 Moultrie Street, excuse me, in Dorchester, Massachusetts. For more information, you can see Sister Megan Leitz. Sister Megan here? No, she's not here today. But you can also visit our website, aocambridge.org slash events for more information. And again, the More Than Our Skin documentary is now available on demand. Woo. Even more great, exciting news. This is now, they are now the winner of the Los Angeles Film Awards. Best documentary. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You can't see it, but Sister Tonya's dancing in the back. <laughs> Almost might need a praise break for that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How many know God is good? Amen. We may not have the band at home, but we got the band here. Amen. Can we just go into a quick 30 seconds? How many know God is good? Thank you. 
great. Hallelujah. So again, they are the winner of the Los Angeles Film Awards Best Documentary Feature, More Than Our Skin. More Than Our Skin shares the journey of five women living with vitiligo, an autoimmune disease that attacks the pigment of your skin. The tickets for the film are only $10, which can be bought and watched by visiting morethanourskin.org. They're also planning on doing an in-person screening here at AOC later this spring. So stay tuned for more information. Amen. So again, we praise God for Brother Greg and Sister Tony for this documentary and how it's going across the globe in the world. Now it's an opportunity to worship the Lord in our giving. Amen. We have numerous ways that you can give here at Abundant Life Church. You can give via our website, aocambridge.org slash give. You can download the app, aocambridge.org. And then also mail your tithes and offering to our church. We're located at 47 Howard Street, Cambridge, Mass, 02139. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for an opportunity to give unto you what you've blessed us to have. Lord, you are our source, and we thank you for the resources that you've given us. So, Lord, we pray that we will be found uh, pleasing in your sight when it comes to our giving. Lord, bless every hand that has to give, and those who have not may be multiplied and used for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, the ushers will also come around so you can give in person as well if you have so. And let's worship the Lord another song of praise. Hallelujah. How many know we serve an awesome God? I mean, we serve an awesome guy. Come on, jump on your feet. Let's do this last one before we go home. Time to
Maybe, perhaps, you may not be available on next Sunday, but next Sunday, we are going to be sending off uh, Pastor Kenneth Height. He's going to Ohio. Next Sunday will be his last week with us. All right? So next week, we're going to have a little celebration for him. Uh, please come and just really celebrate. And if you're not going to be here next week for whatever reason, um, you still can greet him today. And... Uh, I want to just say thank you to all of you, and thank you, Pastor Kenneth. So if he's been working a lot harder, it's because we're really making him work a lot harder before he leaves. <laughs> There's no accident. <laughs> There's no accident. <laughs> we're going to get it all before you go. Right? We're going to get it all. Amen. But we're going, to miss, we're going to miss him a lot, and we want to celebrate him. He'll be preaching next week, so you don't want to miss a word that God will bring to us. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love, your kindness. Thank you, Lord, that you want to make us a body of believers, Lord, who are strong and healthy. You're equipping us for ministry. You're equipping us to go forth. You're equipping us, Lord, Father, that we may have an impact in this world. So, Lord, as we go, I commend your people to God. Now, may the grace of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And may he abound in grace and abound in love as you walk with him. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have an awesome day. Greet someone before you go. Oh, 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 oh,